Hello, in this picture, we're going to look at the GI tract pictorially just to see what are the main clinical presentations of disease. So one of them, very importantly, is bleeding. And bleeding can be due to several reasons, such as ulceration. It can be due to tumour as well. Also, ischemia. And infection. It can, of course, also be due to trauma. Now, it's important to differentiate the symptoms between upper GI bleeding and lower GI bleeding. So usually for purposes of uh, considering GI bleed, we would consider upper GI as the mouth all the way down to the duodenum. And this is also the same definition if we think of endoscopy. So for upper GI bleed, there will be hematemesis, that is when the patient actually vomits blood. Um, and please distinguish this from hemoptysis, which is coughing blood. And the other one would be melina. Melina is when they pass black, very, very pungent smelling tarry stools. Now the next aspect is lower GI bleeding. And uh, lower GI bleeding is a little bit different. The patients can present with bloody diarrhea or blood in the stools. And this is also known as hematochesia. If the bleeding is chronic, they can, instead of presenting with obvious visible blood in the stools, they can instead present with anemia. Now, if the bleeding is very severe, sometimes the patient can even go into hypovolemic shock. One of the causes of shock, if you remember in your hemodynamic uh, lessons, due to GI bleeding. So a second thing that can occur in this tubular organ is obstruction. So for example, if there is a tumour growth, there can be clinically signs of obstruction. And the, there are many causes for this, including tumour, of course. Also foreign bodies within the lumen of the gut. And even extrinsic compression or extrinsic obstruction. Sometimes if there is a peritoneal mass, it can press on the GI tract itself. And there are other uh, mechanical causes such as adhesions due to previous surgery when you have peritoneal adhesions, volvulus where the bowel actually twists on itself and also things like intersusception. So again, the symptoms are different for upper GI obstruction, say in the esophagus or in the stomach versus lower GI obstruction. Uh, the patients may present with early satiety in upper GI obstruction, sometimes dysphagia as well difficulty swallowing, and they also may experience nausea and vomiting. Now for lower GI obstruction, they usually will present more with abdominal distension because the bowel is dilated and uh, the contents are unable to be excreted. Uh, they can also, of course, present with constipation. Sometimes they even may get some spurious diarrhea, watery diarrhea, and of course there may be pain or colic. Now, a very important uh, pathology that may occur is perforation, where there's literally a hole in the wall of the gut and the contents of the gut spill out into the peritoneal cavity. This is potentially a very dangerous condition. It can be due to tumours that penetrate the full thickness of the wall, foreign bodies. It can also be iatrogenic, for example, due to scopes or even due to obstruction, where the wall is very, very dilated and very thin. So, of course, trauma is also a cause, as I mentioned, for example, in uh, scopes. So, clinically, the patients will be very ill. They'll present with what is called acute abdomen. So, the abdomen will be very uh, stiff. It, there will be guarding when you examine the patient. And uh, the patient may eventually have septic shock and also peritonitis, uh, widespread infection within the peritoneal cavity. There can also be disorders of motility as well as absorption. So these patients uh, may have conditions, uh, for example, in certain infections that can give rise to hypermotility of the gut or hypersecretion as well, where there's a lot of fluid coming into the lumen. And um, this can result in very severe diarrhea. There can also be drugs that give rise to uh, motility disorders. And also conditions such as celiac disease can eventually give rise to problems with absorbing of nutrients. So the patients may experience loss of weight, there may be some abdominal discomfort, maybe some diarrhea, and also specific nutritional deficiencies uh, may also be present. 
So these are some of the major conditions uh, diagrammatically shown to you that can occur in the gut. And then next, we're going to look at specific etiologies uh, according to the mnemonic using vitamin C. And we'll look at conditions specifically in the upper GI tract as well as the lower GI tract and try to link them with some of these clinical manifestations.